Hello, I'm Roger Bisby from Skill Builder, and I'm back with another instalment in the extension project that I'm working on. And here we're dealing with the joists and the steels. We're putting in the joists now, and they're a four meter span, these joists. So they're 200 millimeter high joists, and uh, we're just putting them in. I'm, what I'm actually doing here is spacing them out with some noggings. Now, these noggings aren't doing an awful lot of good in terms of stopping the twist, if you like. What they're doing, they're too close to the wall for that. But what they're doing is they're giving me a precise spacing for the joists so that I know that everyone is uniform and we don't have to worry about moving. Sometimes I do this just by screwing a board across the top of the joists just to keep it level and parallel and everything. But I thought well, I might as well do this. I've got enough off cuts. Might as well use the off cuts put in a few noggings or dwangs and that way we're precise. You can see the joist sitting on the steel beam there on the membrane and on the wall on the other side. So here I left some out because we needed to get the steel beam in. And we're just cutting a few timbers. This is Stephen cutting the timbers. Don't cut through my tape measure, Stephen. Oh no, he's miles from it actually. And here we've turned the soil pipe up. This is a pipe from the loo. So we turned it up and asked everybody not to use it because if they do, Mark's gonna get a shower and he won't like it. I know he won't like it. He's not the kind of guy that likes getting covered. So this is a strong boy. We're putting these in because what they do is they support the outer and the inner skin at the same time. And We've still got the inner skin supported on the floor joists there, and we're gonna acro those up on the inside, so that's good. Now I've gotta trim these floor joists. I've trimmed those ones actually already, but the idea is that they have to sit in the web of the steel beam. So we're just trying to work out. The, all, the problem with this job is always, yeah, hey, Mark, yeah, you're not, Mark is not happy. He doesn't like working like this, and that club hammer could fall on his head, he'd be even unhappier. And the reason is that you haven't got room to move. You know, you're trying to get the steel beams in. There are two steel beams to go in here and there isn't an awful lot of room to play with. So what he's gonna do is cut this out, this bit of brickwork, and we're gonna slide that one in closer to where it's gotta be. And just use the all saw. The all saw from Arbortech is a great tool for doing that kind of job. And this is the fine multi-tool, just trimming that last joist and now we're almost there, as Andy Williams would say. Here we are, just check it for level. I don't know what we're checking. Oh, that way, yeah. One day I'll clean this level. Sorry about that. That's going to win me no friends in the level lovers department. So we've got the bodger here, which is on the end of a scaffold span, and that is used to line up the holes. So you can try and line up these holes with the holes on the other steel beam, which is going to be bolted into it. It's got a plate welded on, and those two things will line up. But the trouble is, even though it was all assembled on the factory floor and it's fine, you can see there's a little bit of a twist on the plane between that one steel and the other. So the problem is that other steel is holding up the wall at the moment, so I can't even adjust that. So it's all got to, all the adjustment has got to be done on this large steel. We're going to try and wind those bolts in. So I'm trying to wind them in now. Ask Mark just to give them a wind from the outside so that we can make sure the threads are nice and clear before we assemble it because afterwards it's always a bit of a ball ache to actually try and clear threads you know you, you want to do it put a bit of oil on them maybe and make sure everything's good and mark having another look he's not happy about this because we told him they're going to be nine inch joists and they're only eight inch joists but i have a cunning plan i have a way around it mark don't worry now <laughs> this is great lifting the beam up that's fantastic but then you've got three blokes all stuck on the wrong side of the beam put it down can you lip read can you hear see what mark said there <laughs> he's just it's great so he's out the way now put him on the other end <laughs> and then go again actually it didn't need three men look i've got it on my shoulder on my own i know the other end's on the wall but now we can slide it along place it on the wall got it jay yeah place it on the wall <laughs> it's as easy as that and then slide it on the inside of those acros you can see there's just about room to do it and that means it's all lined up bolted through you can see there's a bit of a channel there welded on it which is a spacer channel and that keeps them from pinching up too tight and here we're just drilling this steel beam because 
I need to get the bits of timber bolted up onto that beam for the jiffy hangers. We've got the double timber in there, we've bolted through, we'll just about fill the nuts on the other side. Just cut a bit more off those joists because those joists are now not sitting in the wall, they're going to sit on the hangers so they've got to be shortened by that much. And there's Alex getting the block work up. Because we've now put the joists in, they've got a good platform to work on the inside. You can see that they can now bring that block work up almost to wall plate height, actually. It'll almost be high enough to put the roof on, but uh, we need to have the scaffolded lifted on the outside. Actually, Rhino Scaffolding that did this scaffolding, good firm, really. They're always obliging. They're always out there. They always try and fit you in, help you out. They know that you don't want to be hanging around. Down here, there isn't an expansion joint because we've got this brickwork in here, this brick pier, which is supporting the steel beams above. This will be absolutely solid. It will be staying here. And the block work can shrink away and expand on either side of that. We haven't exceeded our six meter run on either side of the brick pier. So we don't need to worry about an expansion joint at this level. It's only as we get up higher that you get the possibility of expansion and, and, uh, and cracking. So here you can see we've got the joist. Now they're actually built into the wall. So that stops them twisting there. We've still got noggins on here. We're gonna put some more in the middle. On this end, you can see the joists are sitting almost directly onto this lintel. Now you shouldn't really sit joists directly onto a lintel, but this is more than the lintel. This is like a steel beam. So it's made to take that joist load. But if you've got an ordinary lintel, you normally go for a couple of courses of brickwork above the lintel to spread the load. So that's important. So you can see we've run the joists in here all the way through. And over here, we've got shorter joists and they're built into the wall on one end, but on the other end, they're sitting on that steel beam. Now, I would have let them into the steel beam but for the fact that that steel beam is only a tiny steel beam and so it only had a, a flange of about an inch on it. So there wasn't enough bearing for that. So what we've done is bolted two timbers to that steel beam and then we've used what they call jiffy hangers. These ones are joist hangers from Tico and we've nailed those up so they support all the joists there. But as you can see, the span is very limited and the load on those joists is very and some people wonder about this, so just explain this as well. Some people wonder about these joist hangers because they think, well, they're only held in by tiny little nails. And I mean, when you look at it, you see this twist nail. It is a very small nail. And you think, okay, what's that doing? How does that not pull out? Well, the reason it doesn't pull out is because that's tight in there. That joist actually sits right up against that timber there and it sits tight on the wall the other end. So there's no bagginess in it. If you had a gap of even an inch or half an inch behind that joist, you would have a tendency for it to want to pull the hanger and it may start to pull the nails out. But because it's tight in there, the only load is what they call a shear load, which is a direct downward load. So that doesn't help to be twice as long because the only load that's coming on that nail is a downward force. So you can see the, the sense in it, but when I first started fitting these, I did them in a massive great building which was three stories up and we were fitting them and then walking around on a joist and I felt quite nervous because I thought, it's only like a bit of thin metal, this. How can that possibly support all that load? But it's all well worked out and provided you keep that tight up against it, it's very, very important that that joist is absolutely tight 
against that back edge, then there's no problem with them at all. So I'm Roger Bisbee, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this instalment and that you'll come back and see us again and watch the future instalments. We're gonna be doing the roof. We're gonna have a cut roof on there. Got loads of footage of that to come and uh, I hope you'll become a subscriber. That way, if you press that little bell button on the top, you'll get an automatic notification of any new videos that are coming up on Skill Builder.